Festivals are a major part of many African societies. In Igbo land, as well as some other parts of Africa, there exists a traditional calendar usually punctuated by events and activities, colored with religious and cultural tones all year round. One of such activity, wrapped with huge cultural significance, is the Iguaro, ostensibly one of the oldest surviving Igbo cultural events. The Iguaro, which commences with festivities from the Gregorian month of December through January, marks the beginning of the traditional Igbo yearly calendar. Arguably, one of the biggest cultural fiesta east of the Niger. This event commands huge reverence and symbolism to the Igbos. Little wonder, in Uguku, according to folklore, the community culturally bestowed with the traditional prerogative to proclaim the beginning of the year is usually a steaming arena of cultural convocation for indigents and non-indigents scrambling to partake in this celebration of cultural heritage. Preceded by the cultural sites in the community, such as the frenetic and crowd-pulling masquerade flogging duel known as Ipiawa, which confers ego bragging rights on the winning masquerade group. The celebration of the Iguara commences with the entrance of the king into seclusion, a symbolic act of cleansing. During this time, he does not see anyone for four market days. He, however, makes his first public appearance after his isolation on the eve of the event. Eager to see their king symbolically on a spiritual come cultural voyage, irrespective of religious creed, his palace is usually flooded by many, patiently anticipating his arrival from this cleansing exercise. Yes, this is still Gogi Africa and this is the eve of the most important cultural event in Igbo calendar, east of the Niger. We're talking about the Igbo Rock Festival. Uh -huh. Like you said, this is just the prelude to the main event happening tomorrow. Yes. And the climax of tonight's event is the Igwe emerging from solitary, solitary confinement. It comes out with pomp and pageantry. So stick around and enjoy. The cultural night from Enuguku. <laughs> At exactly 12 midnight, with the blast of cannon shots announcing his arrival, <laughs> clad in sparkling white dress and face covered in white clay, a symbolism of his pristine state, his kinsmen are thrown into a festive mood cheering his arrival from seclusion as he moves around in acknowledgement.
His blessing of kola nut lobes and his sharing across the villages signals the beginning of festivity under the glee of the moon, colored by cultural dance performances deep into dawn. As the day breaks, the civic center of Inuguku, the central arena of the Igoro, assumes a cultural spectacle, brimming with many desirous to partake in this sophisticated heritage of historic and cultural pride. Enugu is one of the oldest kingdoms in Igbo land. You know, as a matter of fact, historians uh, have written, you know, several research papers tracing the, the kingdom, the dynasty, as one of the oldest in the world. So what we are doing here at the Enugu uh, is to promote our culture. Today's event is uh, Eguaro. This is the day that the Igwe, uh, the Enugu Gune Gune, marks the Igbo, Igbo traditional calendar. Iguaro, as the name suggests, is to make pronouncements and name the months, weeks, and days of the year, which is the reason it takes off the first, very first Saturday of each year. My name is Chief Chika Balogu, Ebube de Jemba, Enugu, no more in and Abu Pari Onicha. So I'm from Onicha, but have been highly honored by the Enugu people. Iguan in Enugu, because I'm now a part of Enugu, so Nebu Zeketobo Iguan. So Iguan in Enugu, Kuna Aguaro, every year. Now I'm a Kalan, you friend Ibo Game. Packed full, the over 2,000 capacity civic center, echoing cultural rhythms emanating from traditional performers, holds spectators glued to their seats as they await the arrival of the chief celebrant, His Royal Majesty Igwe Sha Ralph Obomneme Ekwe, heralded by an ivory tuxed trumpeter. A traditional musical ensemble, the beloved traditional ruler makes his appearance in the arena in splendid grandeur, towed in line by cabinet chiefs drabbed in their cultural outfit capped with a ubiquitous colorful headgear to cheers from his people. As he makes his way to his elevated vantage position. Seated on an outcrop of a rock. The rock is a symbolic reassertion of his cultural role as the head of the Omonri clan and custodian of this age-long culture of the Igbos, according to legend. As a matter of fact, this is evidently backed across the east of the Niger, as he is the only traditional ruler who declares the beginning of the year seated atop this outcrop of a rock on an Ampuma Aguaro. <laughs> Nigeria. 
In Igbo lunar calendar, today is one. And we have to perform this ritual every year to announce the beginning of a new year. This is an ancient tradition of Enugu Igwaro. It is the most important thing in the calendar of events in Ubunri. Igwaro, unlike Igbo Ovala, Enugu we do not do Ovala. We do Igwaro, which is a way of thanking God for the outgoing year, for his blessings, for everything, food crops yield. And then, during this day, the Igwe spells out the calendar of events for the preceding year, for the next year, coming year. Um, I know now, no one did one of them arguments. Now, I know who I got out of. Now, I woke calendar on the day. Oh, and who called them. He pronounced the book calendar for the year. And that is now if you buy an apple guaro. If you go and go and make as soon as you see, Nri, Ezemri, Nri, we see Ibo. But a guaro, a quaker, Ibo, you see where it in the year. The Iguara is also a unification event for the many communities with historical links to the Nri, Ibo legend, including Aguleri, Nofia, Enuguagede, and others. This kinship reconnection is symbolically shown after the presentation of Kulanat to the king by the elegantly dressed Obweze, accompanied by wives of the cabinet chiefs. Right here we have the lady that represents the king. She is the wife of the king. She is Obweze. We call her Obweze. Obweze, no, no. So you see the rest of them are the Iyom. And they are all coming in, they are going to pay homage to the king himself. Today in Enugugu is a very great day, as you can see, because we are celebrating the 64th Iguaro ceremony. Um, um, some towns call it Opala, but in Enugugu we call it Iguaro. As long as Igwe has not pronounced the beginning of the new year, the year has not started. After her presentation of the Kulanat, the lobes are shared to the respective traditional rulers with kinship ties to the Nri legend and also to the 18 clans that constitute Enuguku, represented by their clan heads who are also titled men and some are Ozampus. Holding a Kulanat lobe, the highlight of the event is the king's blessing and pronouncement of abundance. More importantly, he calls on Igbo communities to embrace Iguaro, which is the true celebration of the rich Igbo heritage. The place of hard work leading to success is celebrated on this day too. Indigens who have distinguished themselves in different endeavors are conferred chieftaincy titles and awards of merit by the traditional cabinet, ably led by the king. Some of the recipients expressed their joy at being found worthy. Uh, my name is Elijah Onyaba. Uh, today, taking the title of Nikenugukunumuri uh, Jidebube. I'm the Nigerian ambassador to the Republic of Burundi. Uh, it's not awesome, but it's the, it's the Enuguku royal aristocratic cabinet. Uh, what it means is that this is uh, the highest level of uh, uh, governance in Enuguku, which is the traditional cabinet. Uh, it is uh, important that. Uh, 
people that have done well in the society usually during this period are recognized by way of giving them this title and I'm very happy uh, that my community has recognized the efforts we've been making over the years and has decided that it is time to recognize us, my wife and I, as members of the traditional cabinet. Okay, so um, like my husband had earlier explained, the, the Oslo title goes with the Eon title. So this is not Eon title, this is um, Otuo title. So this is on the level of the cabinet of the chiefs of Enugu. So I'm, I'm privileged to serve with my husband with the um, Enugu. Yeah, today I can put you title to to any deserving person all over Nigeria. All the cabinets, the entire cabinet will sit down and recommend to the Ube for its approval. Any other deserve, they will give the title to the person. Uh, in other towns or clans, they regard the Igwaro as a father. But here in Enugu and Umuri, they regard it as Igwaro. It is always a time when he appreciates the people of Enugu and non Enugu indigenous who have excelled in various professions. He recognizes them. Go over say, where we will give chieftaincy title to some prominent personalities of Enugu Kunomori and people who have done noble in their various fields of endeavor. Like today, we are recognizing Ambassador Dr. Elijah Onyaba, the youngest ambassador in Nigeria, as one of those to be given chieftaincy title as E.K. Enugu Kunomori and many other prominent personalities. So that is the Iguaro Festival we are celebrating today. Iguaro. So that is a great thing, a very big tradition in Umuri, in Enugu. You will see a lot of people, dignity, that come from the whole angle. The whole places in this Nigeria are here, but a lot of people are here today. So I thank God for this and also thank God for our king. Underscoring the importance of this event, cultural and troops from across different parts of Igbo land, including the fearsome Arrow war dance troop, the colorfully majestic Ijene, and many other cultural performers make their special appearances in homage to the king. Yeah, what's up, my people? I'm seeing your special boy, Fancy Papaya, the Duke of High Life. This is Goge Africa. Don't touch the die. What I go? Goge Africa, one number one. Let's go there. I want.
Here are some tips on how to enjoy yourself on a long bus ride. Number one, bring fun things to do. Make sure you have enough to entertain yourself. Good things to bring include music player, books, tablet or laptop computer. Engage yourself. Look out through the window at the scenery or talk to other people. Keep a calm mentality about the bus ride. This is harder than it sounds, but when mustard, it is a big help in many areas of life. Avoid snapping at or arguing with fellow commuters, for that will only make the trip dramatic and uncomfortable for everyone. Finally, when the bus does make a few stops, don't hesitate to get off and stretch your legs. Travel Tips is brought to you in conjunction with Gogi Africa Travel Club. Aye, aye. Aye, aye.